everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about 1996's Primal Fear and its brand new Paramount Presents 4K Blu ray. And just like we like to do on every single 4K Blu ray review here on the channel, we'd like to give a film review portion of the show. So if you want to skip ahead to the 4K Blu ray review, you could do that right now. So Primal Fear was directed by Gregory Hoblet, and actually, this started a great three film run for him. He had this in 1996, he had Fallen in 1998, and what I consider to be the most underrated film of all time in 2000 he had Frequency. But he's probably most known for Primal Fear, and this movie stars Richard Gere in the lead role, a real hotshot attorney, arrogant, full of himself, you know, kind of what Richard Gere gets typecast as all the time, other than in a little movie called Internal Affairs, which I just rewatched, and seeing Richard Gere play just an absolute piece of garbage. All right, all right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fuck her for a while, teach her how to c get up. Then she can show you what she like. It was always a lot of fun, even though he kind of always has those underlying things of being a piece of garbage, but he always ends up learning his lesson. He does not learn his lesson in Internal Affairs. He is fantastic in that movie. In this movie, you know, he's kind of relying on that Richard Gere charm, the Richard Gere looks, and he's just perfect for that. He's always so charming. You know, even when he's full of himself at the beginning of this movie, he knows that he's the best, and he's overly confident in himself. And when he sees Edward Norton in his debut film, by the way, and he actually beat out pretty much every young actor working at the time, Apparently, though, they originally chose Leonardo DiCaprio, but he was burnt out from filming a film in Africa. I'm not too sure what film that was, but this came out the same year as his version of Romeo and Juliet, so maybe it was that. But Leonardo DiCaprio was their first choice, but unfortunately, like I said, he couldn't do the job, and they settled on Edward Norton. He had never acted in a film before. A friend of his actually tried out for a different role in this film, and she told him, you know what? They're casting for the lead in this role. They want an unknown, and I think you'd be perfect for it. And this is exactly what put Edward Norton on on the map. He's fantastic in the lead of this film, but all the supporting players in this film are great. Yes, Richard Gere and Edward Norton carry this film. Edward Norton's character, he gets arrested for killing this bishop, a very well-known bishop as well, in the city of Chicago, and they don't know why. He says that it must have been a third man in the room because I don't remember doing this. You know, he seems like a very innocent young man. I think he's like 19 years old. You know, he's got a stutter. He doesn't seem like the kind of person that's gonna hurt anybody. So this obviously attracts Richard Gere. You know, everybody who's gonna be going after this case, he agrees to do a pro bono mainly for the exposure i believe and he starts to believe edward norton that there must be a third man because this kid could never do what he's accused of doing so richard gear starts to investigate he uses the people that work for him including andre bauer the late great andre bauer from brooklyn 99 is in this movie it will actually appears in one of gregory hoblet's other movies frequency so they must have had a good working relationship because andre bauer does have a lot of work to do in this movie and he is fantastic as well laura linney plays the prosecutor in this movie and laura linney i'll always know her most for the Truman Show. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new Mococo drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua. No artificial sweeteners. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? Oh, she's a fantastic underrated actor. If you guys saw Ozark, she was amazing on that. That's probably what she's most famous for now, but she really knows how to carry a scene, and she goes head-to-head -head with Richard Gere, Edward Norton in this movie. We also get Frances McDermott playing the psychiatrist, who is here to, you know, basically clear Edward Norton, because we're trying to figure out what his mindset is. They don't enter into an insanity plea at the beginning of this trial, because at first, they don't really think he's insane. He's saying that he didn't do it. And then as the film starts to unwind, it's like, okay, maybe he is actually insane. And Frances McDermott doing this role in 1996, the same year she wins the Academy Award for Fargo, and she also has a scene-stealing performance in Lone Star. Compared to that, what you know about a person when you get married to them doesn't amount to diddly. And then she pops up in this movie as a psychiatrist, just giving another great performance. No wonder Frances McDermott is a three-time Academy Award winning actress because she really is one of the best to ever do it. But Edward Norton is what's most known about this film. And before we go on with the rest of the review, we're going to have to talk about the twist ending at the end of this film. So if you've never seen Primal Fear, this is your spoiler warning. Come back after you've seen the film because this does have one of the most shocking twists of all time. So at the very end of this movie, we finally get that insanity plea because we find out that Edward Norton's character actually has split personality disorder. He turns into this character Roy, and Roy is the one who ended up killing this bishop, mainly because he made him and his friend have sex with this other girl, and they filmed it and everything like that, so we know that this bishop is a very gross man. Of course, we find out that Aaron slash Roy is a pretty messed up individual in himself, and he was manipulating this whole thing really for personal gain. Obviously, he had a really troubled childhood, if he's telling the truth. 
Either way, or that Bishop is a piece of crap, but it doesn't really matter because Edward Norton's character, this whole time, he was fooling Richard Gere, he was fooling everyone. Richard Gere has an arc in this movie where he has to learn his lesson. He has to actually learn that even though I'm a defense attorney and I defend these guilty people, and he has a great scene explaining why he does what he does. I believe in the notion that people are innocent until proven guilty. I believe in that notion because I choose to believe in the basic goodness of people. He kind of learns like, okay, I can actually get this guy off. But And the fact that Edward Norton betrays him at the very end of this movie and reveals that, yeah, I did this and I knew I was doing it the entire time. I thought we were in there dancing, Marty. He just reveals something. You can just see how Richard Gere, he doesn't blow up, nothing like that. He just kind of shrugs his shoulders and walks away. You know, attorney-client privilege. He can't do nothing about it. He got fooled just as well as everybody else. And I mean, that twist at the end, Edward Norton's acting is just phenomenal. Well, good for you, Marty. I mean, that, honestly, I had no idea that that ending was coming. It wasn't spoiled for me a lot. Like, other endings, like The Sixth Sense. And it's funny because, you know, obviously Fight Club is three years later. And that has one of the biggest twist endings of all time as well. Also involving Edward Norton with split personality disorder. The only difference is he doesn't actually have split personality disorder in Primal Fear. He was just using that basically to get off and get sent to a mental hospital. Now, we don't find out what happens after that. Hopefully someone figures out that he's lying. He was just trying not to go to jail, but we have no way of actually finding out. But yeah, this was a star turning performance by Edward Norton. This really put him on the map. His audition tape for this was so popular that he got cast in two other films, including a Woody Allen film before this film even came out. That's how good he was in this movie and how good he was in the audition. Just a natural talent. The only problem with Edward Norton is he couldn't stay out of his own way. He always had trouble with directors and producers. He wanted to be involved in every single aspect of the film, including the editing which another thing about primal fear a very 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 well edited film it was shot by michael chapman who always really works with martin scorsese and i don't think it's the most beautiful looking film overall that michael chapman has ever shot but of course they're trying to maintain that chicago look it's very gray very cold looking i think that they nailed that it's just not the best looking film to me but i think they nailed that mid 90s look that crime thriller look if you saw this film you're like okay i can see this film came out in either 1995 or 1996 it just has that look to it so i don't think it's the greatest looking film but it is a very, very well edited film. It's a very good film overall. And if you haven't seen Primal Fear, I could definitely recommend it any which way you see it. But maybe you want to see it in this Paramount Presents 4K Blu ray that we're going to talk about right now. 15 seconds on TV. I love it. I fucking love that shit. I really do. Well, here it is. Paramount Presents number 43. This isn't the first time I've ever bought a Paramount Presents release, but it is the first one I've actually bought on 4K Blu-ray. And Paramount, when they do these kinds of releases, it's very strange to me because sometimes a film will come out in the Paramount Presents line like Trading Places, and then it's 4K Blu-ray is just a standard Paramount release. The Paramount Presents lines are usually around the price of $35. That's what this one costs. And that could be a little pricey. This is basically Paramount trying to have a boutique label release, you know, give us all the bells and whistles with really nice packaging. And they never nail the packaging i don't know if the camera is picking up how good this slip cover looks it's got like this silver gold to it it looks absolutely beautiful you know it's very reflective i love it and then when you obviously with a paramount presents they put the original movie poster underneath like this the only thing is when you fold this out like that i don't really like that because then it kind of has a hard time folding back down it'll have no issues when you put it on your shelf it'll close back up but you know it kind of seems like it's a little bit open and also this paper stock is very thin it does kind of feel cheap you just know that the corners are going to get faded and worn down over time that's just a minor complaint because then when you come underneath you get great artwork underneath the same artwork that's on the slip cover because it's a 4k blu-ray you know we usually never have clear cases with 4k blu-rays we have black cases but this has a clear case paramount presents always uses the clear case and that means we have interior artwork if you guys remember scream factory back in the day when they just released blu-rays we always had interior artwork reversible artwork you know when we went to 4k blu-ray we never had the clear cases other than paramount presents and some people will use kind of a see-through case one thing i've always said is like we need like smoke colored 4k blu-ray cases that way we can have the interior artwork so we can end up with stuff like this you get one 4k blu-ray and one blu-ray but i really did appreciate the artwork on this individual disc design so you definitely are paying for a premium with the packaging but at least they nailed that and the 4k blu-ray will be presented in hdr 10 and dolby vision that blu-ray that's packed in there i don't think it's actually this same scan it just looked very bad the blu-ray in my opinion that's packed in here so i think it's actually the previously released 2009 scan that's on that blu-ray i can't confirm it but based on what I was seeing 
that's what it looked like. That looked like how I previously remember seeing this film every time before I saw this 4K Blu-ray, where I just felt like the saturation was too high. It looks very blurry at points. You know, the colors just don't really pop off the screen. It looks very unnatural, and that's how I felt about the pack in Blu-ray. But that pack in Blu-ray is going to feature all of your extras, which are a bunch of little featurettes that could have been edited together into one long documentary that would be about an hour long. You also have the trailer on here. And honestly, those featurettes are great. I don't think they're new featurettes, but they are really good. You get interviews with pretty much everybody. So that's really good. They really unraveled the entire making of process for this film, how they cast Edward Norton. It really is fascinating. But again, it's not much, but I still do appreciate the featurettes that we got on here. Anything that we can get uncovering how they made this movie, I'll always appreciate it. And plus, it basically is a stretched out make it of documentary, which are absolutely my favorites when it comes to the extras. So I don't really have too many complaints about the extras. Now, the audio. The audio is actually Adobe True HD 5.1. We don't really hear that very often anymore. And that's because this is the same audio track that has been following around Primal Fear since 2009. So you think, oh my God, why wouldn't they give us a new track? Why wouldn't they give us a DTS HD 5.1 or Adobe Atmos track? Well, actually, that Dolby True HD 5.1 track is really, really, really good. It's mixed very well. There's a couple helicopter shots in this movie where you can hear the helicopter blades spinning, and it's actually moving through the channels, which is very, very impressive. The audio comes in crisp and clear. As far as the dialogue goes, you have no issues with that as well. No pops, nothing. It's a crystal clear track. They actually made good use of the channels. They mixed it well, so you'll actually have score coming from different channels while you'll have sound effects coming from different channels. Mixed very well for a track that right now is about 15 years old. I was really impressed with it. Honestly, I can see why they kept the track. It doesn't really need to be updated. Other than, you know what, maybe Adobe Atmos track would just give it that little extra oomph. But this isn't really an action-packed type of film. It's a courtroom drama, so of course, you know, we just want to make sure that the dialogue comes in clear. And it really does. I was actually very impressed with this Adobe True HD 5.1 track. They really don't need to give it that much more attention. Maybe a little bit in the future, but honestly, for what it is, it's really good. Now, the visuals. The visuals actually very much surprised me. Paramount is very hit or miss, especially with the Paramount Presents line. Honestly, once they've come to 4K Blu-ray, they've gotten a lot better. If you've seen the Double Jeopardy 4K Blu-ray, I would say that this is probably the most comparable to that. But it's still even better than that, in my opinion. This movie, I thought, was shot pretty well. Like I said, shot by Michael Chapman. There are going to be some shots in this movie that kind of seem a little bit out of focus, maybe a little bit softer. That's a choice by Michael Chapman. That is not actually the 4k blu-ray not looking sharp intentionally no that's just how the film was shot so that's a source material thing so you'll see that very early in the film that's one thing i just wanted to point out there is a good amount of film grain but it's nothing overwhelming honestly it's the perfect amount of film grain film grain has been coming up in 4k reviews a lot lately with the james cameron 4ks well you got the film grain here honestly this is the best that this film has ever looked the dolby vision and the hdr 10 are both very comparable the dolby vision look great one thing about this 4k blu-ray in comparison to that blu-ray like i said they kind of pulled back a little bit on the saturation it looks much cooler than it ever did before you know i thought that the blu-ray and the way i previously seen this film you know you could tell it's supposed to be a cooler looking film as far as the color temperature goes in the movie but i felt like the previous scan was too warm well they fixed that so now there's certain scenes with edward norton where him or richard gear or him and francis mcdermott they're going to be in an interview room and for some reason the lighting in the room is like red we don't see where the light source is but it has like this background red lighting to it and it would be a little bit too overblown on the previous edition. And now they kind of pulled back on that where it's not overwhelming the scene. And you just feel that throughout the entire film. There's one point Laura Linney's wearing a red suit where, you know, if the saturation was up way too high or the color was just up way too high or the contrast, you know, that might pop off the screen and look a little bit unnatural. But no, it doesn't because this film itself in general doesn't have the warmest color temperature. But that doesn't mean that the colors don't pop off the screen at certain points. You'll be in the courtroom and you'll see books in the background. And because the color now is so dynamic, Dynamic. It actually does draw your eye. This will happen throughout the entire 4K. You know, when police cars pull up, you know, the red and blue sirens, all that stuff is going to stand out to you because this movie in general is not the most colorful movie where, you know, it's got, it's very overcasty, it's gray outside. You know, we're talking about lawyers wearing gray suits, everything like that. That's why when they go to this one bar and it's got this pink neon light that just pops off your screen. And that way you can just see how good the HDR and the Dolby Vision really is. So the visuals were great on this 4K Blu-ray not knock your socks off great you know this isn't going to be something you put on as a reference quality 4k blu-ray but if you've seen primal fear in the past this is the best that it's ever looked by far i have never seen primal fear look this good just don't go into this expecting to be the greatest 4k blu-ray that you've ever seen but overall i mean the only issue i have with this is that it's 35 dollars which might be hard to justify 
and it's not really completely comparable to a boutique label in the sense that you know criterion usually releases their 4k blu-rays for about 35 bucks in very similar packaging as this but usually you'll get a lot more extras the only difference i can honestly say between criterion and this release is that actually paramount does give you a lot more audio options and a lot more subtitle options compared to the criterion collection so that is a plus it's just really hard for me to justify 35 bucks i honestly think you know maybe at 30 bucks that is the sweet spot so maybe if this goes on sale but you know honestly it's a great 4k blu-ray release this is the best that primal fear has ever looked it is the same exact audio track so if you have the previous release it's the same audio track if you like that audio track then you're gonna like this audio track the extras don't appear to be new as well so really you're looking for the visual upgrade but also the packaging upgrade so the packaging for me is definitely the standout along with the visuals you know the audio is going to really come down to how you feel about it for me i've never owned this movie before i was blown away by the audio very impressed for a track that old to be mixed that well definitely a great audio track so how would i rate this 4k blu-ray overall on a score of 1 to 10 i would actually give primal fear on 4k blu-ray a pretty solid 9 out of 10 i could definitely recommend this one the only issue might be it might be a little bit too pricey at the current moment and i honestly would have just liked a little bit more extras but again not everybody cares about the extras but for me that's a big deal i just love seeing how the sausage is made that's just me personally though but anyway guys that's gonna do it here for me on another episode of let's talk if you enjoyed this episode don't forget to hit that like button hit that subscribe button turn notifications on share this video if you could or if you want to become a channel member and take your supporter let's talk to the next level we have a friends of the channel tier we have a producers tier that's where you're going to find john doe juggalo who has a youtube channel as well that you guys should check out jason martin and mr smelly potato and then we have a director's tier that's the big dogs here on the channel where you can get your own individual review each and every single month that's where you're going to find frank's medium reviews who has a great youtube channel as well my co-host of collector's corner make sure you guys head over to his youtube channel subscribe there and I promise you, you won't regret it. But if you got no money to throw our way, guys, don't worry about it. We just appreciate you checking out this video. We really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you get out in those streets and tell your friends about us. And after that, we'll be seeing you around.